A few weeks ago, we published our biggest 2024 Apple products video, which you guys have really loved. In that video, I talked about the iPhone, the Apple Watch, the AirPods, and the iPad, which are Apple's biggest products to get updated in 2024. And a lot of you have been asking me about the 2024 Macs, which are not getting that big of an upgrade, but we are still seeing some improvements. So here's everything you need to know in terms of all the upcoming 2024 Macs. And the first Mac to get updated is the MacBook Air, which according to Mark Gurman, both MacBook Air models, the 13-inch and the 15-inch, will get updated by the end of March. The 13-inch was last updated in July of 2022, while the 15-inch was last updated in June of 2023. So uh, they are definitely both due for an upgrade. And the most notable change is going to be the switch from the M2 to the M3 chip. Based on what we've seen so far with the M3 MacBook Pro, you're getting about a 10 to 20% faster CPU performance with the same number of cores. Whereas with a GPU, you can expect up to a two times faster performance. Plus, we also get hardware-based ray tracing with the M3 chip. So if you do play any games that support it or you use Blender or any other apps that also make use of it, you'll see some even bigger performance gains. But really, the main benefit of the M3 chip is when it comes to the battery life. We've seen the 14-inch M3 Mac Pro increase its longevity by two extra hours from its previous M2 model. Now, the M3 Mac Pro did also feature a larger battery, which of course did play a role in those two extra hours. Although, a part of that was also the increased efficiency of the 3 nanometer M3 chip. Also, we are getting a new AV1 decode engine with the M3 chip. So if you watch a lot of YouTube, the playback will now be more efficient as YouTube does use the AV1 codec, potentially resulting in some battery gains here too. So with these new MacBook Airs, I'm definitely not expecting a two hour increase in their battery life as the battery size itself will likely remain the same. I am however expecting between 30 minutes to one extra hour from the current 18 to up to 19. My M2 MacBook Air can already last me for multiple days straight, so I won't really need the extra battery of the M3 model. Still, I would hope to see some improvements here regardless. And I also expect Apple to improve the durability of the midnight color. With my Space Black M3 MacBook Pro, I've noticed that the ports were far more durable when it came to scuffing compared to the MacBook Air. Part of that is, of course, the improved anodization process, but also it looked to me that the ports themselves were more rounded on the inside, which could have helped with reducing the friction between the cable and the ports. Also, speaking of the space black color, I would love to see this come to the Airs too. And finally, even though this hasn't been leaked, I do expect Wi-Fi 6E to also be introduced, uh, just like the M3 MacBook Pros. Overall, some pretty good upgrades. Now, before we move on to the desktop Macs, just take a look at how gorgeous our new Tender Tones wallpaper specs looks like on this MacBook. Tender Tones is made by Hannah, the creator of our Pastel Pastures pack from before. And now she's back with another beautiful minimal pastel pack that looks great on all of your devices, from your smartphone to your tablet. And of course, you can find wallpapers on the App Store and the Play Store, as well as by using the link below. The next Mac to get updated in 2024 is the new Mac Mini, which according to Mark Gurman, that would be in late 2024 at the earliest. We could see this Mac Mini before the late 2024 release date that Mark Gurman initially predicted. WWDC would be my personal guess, as the M2 Mac Mini came out in January of 2023, so seven months after the M2 chip was introduced. And if we add seven months to when the M3 chip was introduced, which was back in November 2023, that would actually give us June. Now, in terms of what upgrades to expect, aside from the upgrades that the M3 chip would come with, which I've talked about before, we will also be getting the M3 Pro model of the Mac Mini, which depending on your task, it can give you up to a two to three times faster performance than the M3 model. Of course, you also get more RAM on this model with a base starting from 18 gigabytes of RAM and configurable up to 36 as opposed to eight and 24. Plus a much faster SSD like we've seen with the M3 Pro MacBook Pro, as well as two extra Thunderbolts and triple monitor support as opposed to just two on the M3 Mac Mini. So this M3 Pro model would definitely be the star of the show, especially if Apple keeps the same $1,300 price point, which means that you'll be able to get the same performance as an M3 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro for $700 less. In fact, you'll even get more performance than an M3 Pro 14-inch as the Mac Mini has better cooling and it's also able to draw more power. Not even to mention that you're also getting more ports with two USB-A's, one extra Thunderbolts, although you do lose 
well, the screen, trackpad, keyboard, and also the SD card slots. Which brings us to the Mac Studio. According to an early January report from Mark Gurman, Apple will be launching a new Mac Studio in the second half of 2024. And Chinese tech publication IC Smart believes the same, mid-2024, for the new Mac Studio. Which, to me, sounds like another WWC release, very likely alongside the new Mac Mini. And when it comes to what to expect from the 2024 Mac Studio, just as before, we would have two versions of it, an M3 Max and an M3 Ultra version. Now, the M3 Max would have the same specs as the M3 Max MacBook Pro. That's up to a 16-core CPU, up to a 14-core GPU, and up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. And this is the version that I think most people would be going for. We already know that the M3 Max chip was a gigantic improvement over the M2 Max. However, for those who need even more performance, we'll also have an M3 Ultra model. So based on what Apple has done before, the M3 Ultra should be two M3 Max chips combined, with up to a 32-core CPU, up to an 80-core GPU, and up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. However, according to a new report from TrendForce, Apple is planning on using the much newer N3e TSMC process rather than the current N3b like the M3 Max chip is using. On one hand, this is the latest 3nm TSMC process, and the same one that Apple would be using for their upcoming A18 chip, which will be inside the iPhone 16 Pros. But on the other hand, this also means that the M3 Ultra would not be made out of two M3 Max chips connected by Ultra Fusion, and instead it would be an entirely new chip, either one designed from scratch or one that uses two M4 Max chips, which means that we should see even greater performance gains in this case. Of course, we are not expecting the actual M4 Pro and M4 Max chips this year, or at least we haven't had any leaks on them whatsoever, uh, but if the M3 Ultra is indeed made out of two M4 Max chips, we might see them by the end of the year after all. Which brings us to the new Mac Pro, and here we haven't had any leaks on it whatsoever. So it is safe to assume that we'll get it at the same time as the new Mac Studio, as they'll both feature the exact same chip. However, what I would like to see here is either an even more powerful M3 Extreme chip, or Apple simply taking better use of the Mac Pro's PCIe slots. As with the current M2 Ultra Mac Pro, these slots were only used for adding more storage or more ports. As Apple Silicon does not support external GPUs, all you got was a significantly larger Mac Studio with very few extra benefits. And lastly, we have the displays. The studio display is supposed to being two years old at this point, with the Pro Display XDR being almost five. Now, Mark Herman claimed in a July 2023 report that Apple was working on some new monitors, ones that do have some sort of Apple Silicon inside that turns them into a smart display whenever they're not in use. I can see this being very useful for MacBook users. You disconnect your MacBook, but your monitor stays on, displaying the time and your notifications. However, it doesn't make much sense for anyone who uses a desktop Mac. And from the looks of it, it doesn't seem like the current studio display will get any software updates to enable the smart functionality, despite it already having an A13 chip inside. Personally, what I would love to see here is, number one, a more affordable version of the studio display, one that has no speakers, no Apple Silicon, and no camera just a good 5K panel for $1,000 or less. And then two, a pro version of that display that's got 120Hz, mini LED, and proper HDR support, and also one that costs less than what the Pro Display XDR currently costs. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in terms of all of these Mac leaks, and if you're planning on buying a Mac in 2024, which one would that be? I'm Daniel, this is Zone of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers.